Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at experimental and theoretical probability. We're going to answer the question, what are experimental and theoretical probability and how can they be found? So let's start with experimental probability. This is the ratio of the number of times the event occurred to the total number of trials in the event. It is based on what actually happens in the experiment. And then theoretical probability is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the total number of possible outcomes. It is based on what should happen under perfect circumstances. So to find both of them, you will put them over the total. The experimental probability is just going to be the number of times that that event actually occurred. And the theoretical probability is going to be the number of times that that event should occur or the number of favorable outcomes. So let's look at the first one. It says the spinner shown was spun for a probability experiment. The results were recorded in the table. And first they want us to record the theoretical probability. So this spinner is divided into four sections and it looks like it's even so they are all equally likely to happen. So red, yellow, blue, and green could all be spun one out of four times. That is the theoretical probability. Now let's look at the experimental probability, what actually happened. So the blue was spun four or eight times, the yellow was spun five times, green four times, and red three times. So it definitely was not like the theoretical probability where they should have happened an even number of times. Um, and let's add them up to see the total because we will have to determine the experimental probabilities by putting the number of times they happened over their total. So eight plus five is 13, 13 plus four is 17, and 17 plus three is 20. So there were 20 trials in this experiment. So that means that blue had an experimental probability of eight out of 20. And both of those numbers are divisible by four. So this simplifies to two out of five. Okay, red was spun on three times out of the 20 total trials. That can't be simplified any further. Let's go to green. Green was spun four out of the 20 times. Both of those numbers are divisible by four, so four out of 20 simplifies to one out of five. And then the last color, yellow, was spun five out of the 20 times. Both of these numbers are divisible by five, so the yellow experimental probability was one out of four times. All right, let's look at A. It says, what is the difference in the experimental and theoretical probability of landing on red? So we know that the red, well, all of the colors had a theoretical probability of one out of four. And then let's look at the experimental probability of the red. It was three out of 20. And to find the difference of them, I'm gonna have to subtract these probabilities. So I need to get common denominators. I can get this four to become a denominator of 20 by multiplying the fraction by five. So one out of four equals five out of 20. And now I can find the difference. I can subtract these fractions. So I'm gonna do five out of 20 minus three out of 20. And that equals two out of 20, which simplifies to one out of 10. So the difference in the theoretical and experimental probability of landing on a red was one out of 10. Then B says, which color has an experimental probability equal to its theoretical probability? So all of the theoretical probabilities were one out of four, and yellow also had a one out of four experimental probability. So yellow was the only one that had the same experimental and theoretical probability. And then C says, what is the experimental probability of not landing on a blue? So let's figure out what is the probability of landing on a blue first. That was two out of five. So the probability of landing on a blue was two out of five. So that means the probability of not landing on blue would be at the other 
three, five, three times out of the five. Okay, let's look at two. It says, Brooke has a pouch with 24 school supply items in it. There are five markers, 10 crayons, three glue sticks, and the rest are mini erasers. What is the theoretical probability of randomly selecting an eraser? So I know that the total is 24 school supply items, but I don't know how many are the erasers since it said the rest are erasers. So let's subtract the other items to figure out how many erasers there were. So I'm going to do 24 minus 10, sorry, let me start with the markers, minus five markers and 10 crayons and the three glue sticks. That'll tell me how many erasers were left. So 24 minus five is 19, minus 10 is nine, minus three is six. So that means that out of the 24 items, six were erasers. So the theoretical probability of selecting an eraser would be six out of the 24 items. And I'm just gonna simplify this fraction. Both of these numbers are divisible by six. So that simplifies to one out of four. So the theoretical probability of selecting an eraser is one out of four. All right, let's look at number three. It says Phoenix rolls a die 12 times. So that's gonna be the total for the experimental. And it says the results are shown in the table. What is the theoretical probability of rolling a two? So it looks like the this is a six sided die and one of the sides is a two. So the theoretical probability would be that one out of six sides is a two. Now let's look at the experimental probability of rolling a two. They rolled a two, three out of the 12 total times. So the experimental probability is three out of 12. And I'm just gonna simplify this by dividing the numerator and the denominator by three. So the experimental probability was one out of four. And then C says, what is the difference between the theoretical and experimental probability of rolling a one? Well, I know that the theoretical probability of rolling a one is one out of six, since there's six sides and one of the sides is one. And the experimental probability of rolling a one, I can figure out from the table, they rolled a one, one out of the 12 times. So the experimental probability is one out of 12. And now I want to find the difference between these. So I'm gonna to have to subtract. So I wanna make sure I have common denominators. So I'm going to multiply the one out of six fraction by two so that that six denominator will turn into a 12. And now I can subtract these experimental and theoretical probability, be two out of 12 minus one out of 12, which would equal one out of 12.